The story has been told so many times. If nobody here knows how Naruto got the Nine Tails, then you objectively live under a rock. All right, all right, I'm just picking. You don't live under a rock, just very close to one. Naruto was born on a night that the village was thrown into turmoil. The Nine Tails was set free, and in a moment of freedom and vengeance, having been trapped in a cage of human chakra since the era of the first Hokage, nearly 70 years, Kurama attempted to lay waste to those who would threaten him. A gentle creature and a force of nature, forced to the provocation of wrath for being mistreated. Honestly, I feel like this was a grand mistake of Hashirama Senju. Capturing the tailed beasts and subjecting them to the rule of the great shinobi nations. Way to drop the ball on that one, Hashirama-sama. But at the same time, I won't accuse him, as this would have happened anyway. However, befriending Kurama could have been better than sealing him away, if possible. But I guess that's just where the cookie crumbles. Hashirama was a great human being, but he was just that, a human being. So it's understandable that he makes mistakes. Still doesn't really change that he and Minato are among my favorite Hokage. In fact, Naruto is actually really low on my list of Hokage, only beating out Hiruzen. We don't talk about Danzo. He technically wasn't even Hokage, he was Lord Fifth and a Half. Not even worthy of being on the rock. Wait, what was I talking about again? Uh... Oh yeah! So anyway, Kurama gets pulled out of Kushina, the red hot chili pepper of the leaf dies, and baby bee Naruto ends up having to have the nine tails sealed into him. Ah. Oh. He's adorable, but something big should be noted. When Minato seals Kurama away, he only seals half into Naruto, the yang half. Minato keeps the yin to himself, which he drags to the Shinigami's stomach along with him. Minato knew from the start that Naruto wouldn't be able to handle the full nine tails, which is why he divided Kurama's power in half. But I wonder, what if Naruto managed to get all of Kurama? Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please also consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. We've also noticed a little trend of YouTube unsubscribing people from channels, so if you could do us a favor and double check that you are subscribed, we would really appreciate it. This story is about the same as you'd expect it. Naruto is an unloved, unprotected bean who is hated by everyone and cast aside. But he attempts to join the academy and, well, he sucks. He sucks at everything. He can't even make a regular shadow clone. But amazingly, through some less than legal methods, as well as the help of Iroka Umino, Naruto manages to pass and gets added to Team 7. So far, nothing really seems to be different. That is, until the Land of Waves arc. For most of the series, Kurama has remained dormant within Naruto. Despite the incredible power he possesses, the seal is strong and he hasn't been able to break it. So he merely awaits for Naruto to give him a chance. And that chance eventually comes in the form of Sasuke's supposed death. Naruto's emotions go out of control and he loses his grip on Kurama's power. Kurama starts to manifest as a chakra cloak, but this is more than you'd remember. His power continues to skyrocket. Naruto's power goes beyond comprehension, shaking the entire bridge. A feeling comes over the entire village. In the distance, children are crying. On the bridge, workers are wetting themselves, attempting to hide and jumping into the water below. Even the men Gato is bringing with him take a second look to see if it's really worth it to go to the bridge. Zabuza himself would look back at Naruto and ask, what the hell is that kid? Kakashi would feel a cold shiver run down his spine, as there'd only been one time he had felt this. He turns back and looks. Naruto's back arches as his face stares straight up into the sky, his energy spiking out of control. He lets out a massive cry, and Haku, sitting on the ground, is still in awe. Naruto would look down at him, his eyes red, his teeth turn to fangs, the pigmentation around his eyes further becoming like that of a fox's whiskers, becoming far more feral. Suddenly, he steps forward and rips Haku to shreds, blood and guts everywhere. Well, actually, no, I won't say that. Don't want to get too gory for the more sensitive peeps here. Let's just say that Kurama kills Haku and leave the rest up to your imagination. Naruto would step forward and would seem to offer a cold smile. Kurama would quickly appear before them with speed that even a Jonin couldn't match. The only reason Kakashi could even see it was because of his Sharingan. With one small slash of his claws, Kurama would bisect Zabuza the long way, the movement so fast that Zabuza himself would not have even noticed. He would think it missed until he falls. Naruto would turn to face Kakashi. He would groan. The mere look of that Sharingan in his head filled the beast within with rage. At one time, that thing had been used to control him. Learning from that mistake, Kurama resolves to only look into Kakashi's right eye to avoid the Sharingan. 
He steps forward as if he's getting ready to give Kakashi the same fate as Zabuzo when suddenly there is a yellow flash in his subconscious. Naruto is cut out of Kurama's grip and the seal is tightened once more. Suddenly, Naruto would fall forward with a gasp, shivering in fear. What happened to me, he says as he looks up at Kakashi, tears of terror sitting atop his lower eyelids. Kakashi, at this point, takes a step back, unsure what to do. The shinobi in his heart screams out, kill him, kill him, and the teacher and mentor inside of him shouts, protect him, protect him. Unsure what to do at all, he bears his Sharingan and puts Naruto to sleep with the strongest genjutsu he can cast. He carefully takes up Naruto and feels that his chakra has calmed. He returns as he sees Sakura there, no longer protecting Tazuna. Right now, it seems like Tazuna is protecting her. She's behind him, scared half to death, refusing to stand anywhere near Naruto. The shock of the situation had left her stunned. She hadn't even processed Sasuke yet, who Kakashi could tell was still alive after close inspection. They don't stop for anything. They make their way back to the leaf as fast as they possibly could. Kakashi would wonder if he should bring Naruto into the village and risk the village being ground zero of the Ninetales attack once more, or leave him outside to get someone while risk Naruto being stolen. In the end, he makes the decision to send Sakura in, who can't wait for a chance to get away from this. He informs her to run to the Hokage's office with a letter from Kakashi to get her through the door. It wouldn't be long before the Hokage in full battle gear surrounded by Anbu showed up. From this moment, they take Naruto off to a secret location run by the Anbu. There, Danzo would meet them. Kakashi would give a debriefing, as would Sakura and Sasuke, who's just waking up from his coma. Sakura and Sasuke are allowed to leave when they finish giving their debriefing, but Kakashi stays behind. Danzo is adamant that the Nine Tails should be stripped from Naruto and given to a new host. However, Hiruzen recalls the promise he made to Minato and Koshina and refuses. Danzo steadfastly disagrees, but Hiruzen refuses to allow them to strip it from Naruto. He takes executive action to place a new seal on Naruto to completely cut off the Nine Tails' influence on him. This is a variation on the Five Element Seal. Danzo considers using Koroamatsukami on Hiruzen, but with Kakashi in the room, he knows that it will easily be countered. Kakashi is no slouch, and he also does not trust Danzo as far as he can throw him. Naruto is allowed to be free as Hiruzen believes that he's no longer a threat. However, he keeps a guard of Anbu close on his tail at all times. However, after this ordeal, Team 7 would end up transferred to a new Jonin, Yamato. Now, Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke don't understand why they were transferred over to him. Sakura thinks it's because he doesn't like them anymore. Sasuke thinks it's because he's too scared, and Naruto feels it's the same as all the others. He realized Naruto is the Ninetales and has begun to hate him. How much longer until Yamato does the same? In actuality, however, Hiruzen ordered this. After hearing that Kurama specifically avoided making eye contact with Kakashi, he realizes that the Tailed Beast has learned how the Sharingan functions, and thus can no longer be used. He transferred them to Yamato because Yamato, as it stands, is the only person in the world who can currently make use of the same wood style that the first Hokage had. This means that he has the capability of using the same techniques as Hashirama Senju, which includes, and is not limited to, Hokage style, 60 year old technique, entering society with bliss bringing hands. Man, what a great jutsu. This technique would be able to help pacify Naruto should the threat of the Ninetales ever return. Given all of this, Team 7 would also be restricted from entering the Chunin exams, which means that the Rookie 9 is now just the Rookie 6. However, as the Chunin exams start to take place, it becomes evident that something's up. Naruto, at this time, would have met Jiraiya and started training under him to become a better shinobi. Jiraiya would question the five element seal Naruto now possesses, but Naruto would beg him not to take it off or else the demon might get out. Jiraiya knows what this means, but he thinks that Naruto is being overdramatic. Naruto can learn to control it. However, upon learning that it was the third Hokage who just recently placed this seal on him, he relents. As the Chunin exams continue, it becomes known that Orochimaru is on the move. Gara, unopposed by Sasuke, the best he would have to fight is Neji, and I sort of feel like Gara beats him. That, on top of everything else, Gara would put himself to sleep and release Shukaku. But can he be stopped? Well, probably, if Yamato gets there in time. In the end though, Naruto and Jiraiya would be facing off against Orochimaru's snakes. It's then that Naruto decides to trust Jiraiya. Jiraiya would remove the five element seal and tell Naruto that if he uses the tailed beast's power, not to give it an inch in his mind. Naruto would help Yamato face off against Gara, and he would end up in the hospital after, much like in the original. He would travel with Jiraiya to get Tsunade. Along the way, he would find the Akatsuki who seek him for his nine tails. When he gets there, most of this remains the same. That is, until Kurama tells him to take his chakra to beat Orochimaru. Normally, Kurama would be turned down, but his power and influence here is greater than before. 
If Naruto, in a moment of need, gives into Kurama's power, which is possible the moment he gets his heart muscles cut by Kabuto, Kurama might just be able to take over. And if he takes over, well, imagine that cage we see Kurama in and Naruto standing on the outside talking to Kurama. Well, reverse that. Naruto is now the one in the cage, and Kurama is the one outside. You know what happens here? Kurama forces Naruto's body to suddenly go Kurama Sage Mode, and with that, my soul Orochimaru is dead. Kabuto's dead. They're so dead that even the impure world reincarnation jutsu won't be able to bring them back to life. That's an exaggeration, but also, it's not. Because the Akatsuki will not learn to use the impure world reincarnation jutsu because Kabuto isn't alive to teach them. Kurama would take over Naruto's body. At any point in time, Kurama can escape Naruto's body, but for a second, let's just make an assumption. What if Kurama is smart enough to realize that he can much more easily hide if he has a Jinchuriki body? Oh yes, wouldn't that be fun? Kurama kills Tsunade and Jiraiya as well, and he heads back to the Leaf seemingly defeated. He's taken in for debriefing, where he puts on quite a show, tearfully telling them that Jiraiya was killed and that everyone died. They were killed by Orochimaru and Kabuto. I would also assume that Kurama would have disposed of the bodies. From here, he begins searching for the perfect time to let himself loose. He realizes that the Uchiha are dead. Without them, nobody can stop him. Nobody except Sasuke, Kakashi, and Yamato. Naruto would have witnessed Yamato using wood release at some point in time, and Kurama would know what that does. So the first person he would go for is Yamato, since he's close by and the Jonin in charge of Naruto. He would be the biggest threat, so he'd seek Yamato out and wait for the perfect moment. He would play the troubled card. He'd act like he was upset from the mission, like he needed to talk to his Jonin alone. And the moment they're alone, the claws come out. Thomas Paine once wrote, The cunning of the fox is as murderous as the violence of the wolf. This is about the size of it. Remember that the fox is a cunning creature. In Japanese mythology, it's only challenged by the tanuki, which is explanation for why Kurama and Shukaku have the heaviest rivalry. The moment Yamato isn't paying attention, chakra mode is activated and he ruptures him apart before he even has a chance. Next on the list is Sasuke. It wouldn't be too hard though, he's just a kid. He was almost killed by Haku, who Kurama had already slaughtered. And the best part? He lives by himself. Kurama would leave the room and close the door behind him. He would rush down the street as people spit at him for being the Ninetales. This makes Kurama smile because finally they're spitting at the right person and he is about to spit back. He finds Sasuke's apartment and knocks on the door. Sasuke opens the door to see Naruto covered in blood and his eyes scream, I need help. Sasuke would let him in and ask him what the problem was. He doesn't even have a chance to finish that sentence. Naruto completely eviscerates the young Uchiha. He would then make his way to his own apartment, where he would take a shower and get on a fresh set of clothes. As he's about to leave though, he suddenly hears a knock at the door. He's confused with who could possibly be there, who visits Naruto. Nobody, that's who. He comes to the door and would open it, and wouldn't you know it, it's Kakashi Harake. Kurama is shocked to see him, at the same time he knows this is highly unusual. Kakashi is putting on a happy face, which is unsettling. Kakashi only does this when it's a serious matter, as if Kakashi is already saying that he knows. But he can't know, right? Not unless he found Yamato or Sasuke, but even then, who could believe a child like Naruto, a Genin for that matter, could kill a highly skilled Jonin, especially in the most brutal way that he had? But then again, Naruto wasn't just another kid, was he? He was the Nine Tails Jinchuriki, and that would answer a lot of questions. Naruto lets him in as if nothing's wrong. Kakashi steps in and looks around. Kurama, in Naruto's voice, questions the Jonin. So what brings you by, Kakashi-sensei? Kakashi would look around. Oh, nothing much, just wanted to check up on you. Heard you were going through some stuff. Kurama would begin to smile. He's just here because I've been playing the victim, Kurama thinks. He has unknowingly walked right into my trap. Kurama would then look over. Yeah, I've just been looking for someone to talk to. Kakashi would nod. Understandable. You watched Tsunade and Jiraiya die. Jiraiya was a godfather to you, right? I bet it's hard to find someone to talk with. Have you tried talking to Yamato about it? He is your Jonin. Maybe Sasuke. He understands you better than anyone. He's lost people too. At first, Kurama was startled by the sudden mention of Sasuke and Yamato's names. But maybe the logic was there. I tried, but I couldn't find them. Kakashi would nod. Of course not, but the Anbu that have been following you ever since the Land of Waves sure did. Kurama knew at that moment. He attempted to attack Kakashi, flying right into chakra mode, but Kakashi barely dodged. Kurama would turn around and see Kakashi raise his headband above his eye, exposing his Sharingan. Kurama would laugh. What sort of fool do you take me for? I know exactly what that does and how to avoid it. Kurama would rush at him again, but suddenly his right leg goes out from under him. What? There was a sudden surge of intense pain. 
He looked down and saw his right leg no longer existed. He cursed and looked up to see Kakashi, but his Sharingan had changed. It bore a brand new design. What was this new ability that had crippled his host body? At this point, Kurama felt like he was screwed. How would he be able to deal with this? Kakashi could merely look at him and Kurama was dead. What more could he do? Wait, the answer was right there. Naruto. Kakashi wouldn't kill Naruto. He may have mortally wounded this body, but he wouldn't just kill him. He could have, but he didn't. He could have used Kamui on his head, but he didn't. He was still intending to save Naruto. Kurama would groan and return to base. Suddenly, he'd cry out in agony and roll over, blood still gushing from his leg. He would scream, Kakashi sensei wha why is my leg gone? Kakashi would kneel down and look at Naruto. Quit playing around. I can see the tailed beast chakra still pulsing through your chakra pathways. If you think I'm not willing to kill Naruto, Ninetales, think again. I like him, but if I need to kill him to protect the village from you, I will, and you'll die too. Kurama would look up. You would only free me to return to this world, he would shout. Kakashi would think for a moment. Maybe so, but what if you're not in this world? Kurama would be confused, but before he could question him further, he would end up in the Kamui dimension. He would cry out in anger. Kakashi would stand, looking at the blood on the floor. This was truly for the best. Danzo would want the tailed beast stripped from Naruto, which was sad, but national security was at stake. Kakashi would try his best to save Naruto, but it was all in Danzo's hands now. Kakashi would make his way back to Danzo and declare that he had captured the Ninetales. Danzo would ask him to present the child, and Kakashi would use his Kamui. But to his surprise, Naruto did not come out. Danzo seemed angered, and Kakashi was confused. Where is he, Kakashi? Danzo would ask, and Kakashi would smile and rub the back of his head. No clue. Elsewhere, Kurama would wake up to see a man sitting in front of him, a man in an orange spiral mask. Where am I? Who are you? He would ask. The man would laugh. Don't you recognize me? Kurama would be shocked. Madara Uchiha. He would quickly look away from him. Toby would stand. It seems you've learned from your past encounters with me. You should further note that there is no way for you to beat me. Submit. Kurama would sit there for a minute, and suddenly he would shoot out from the body of Naruto, abandoning it entirely to face off against Toby. However, he would find that his attacks passed right through the being's body. Suddenly, Toby would disappear and reappear in front of Kurama and stare him right in the eye. You're a big target, Ninetales, he would say in that smooth as silk English dub Madara voice. Neil Kaplan is such a wonderful voice actor. Kurama would fight it, but find himself cast under Genjutsu, and what does the Akatsuki do with him? feed him to the ghetto statue, of course. Sad enough, this leads to the death of Naruto. Giving Naruto the Ninetales in full is not a good idea because when he loses control in such a young state, he loses control. And Kurama is free to escape and do as he will, but before we close this video, let's take a look at how things would change. Alrighty, this is still during the search for Tsunade arc, so obviously Tsunade doesn't become the Hokage. That would be Danzo. The Sasuke recovery arc never occurs because Sasuke is dead, as is Orochimaru and Kabuto. This leaves the Sound 4 with nobody to work for or snatch from the village. Nobody would be searching for Sasuke either because, as I said earlier, él es la grande muerto. Since this has happened, the two and a half year timescape is pretty empty as nobody's training right now. I mean, maybe Sakura, but all in all her career is probably over, scarred for life. The Kazakage rescue mission happens, but it's a big flop because Sakura isn't there to help Chio kill Sasori, and Naruto isn't there to stop Deidara from escaping with Gara's body. The Tenchi Bridge recon mission never happens because the only people from that entire encounter still alive are Sakura and Sai, and neither have any motivation for doing so. The Akatsuki suppression would take place, and believe it or not, this still turns out exactly the same because Kakashi could have killed Kakuzu without Naruto's help, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. The tale of Jiraiya the Gallant never happens because he got dead before Pain had a chance to get his mitts on him. No faded battle between brothers either, as Itachi merely dies of his illness alone. Pain never attacks Konoha to kill anyone because the Nine Tails isn't there. None of this actually happens. All they need now is the Eight Tails, and that won't be that hard. The Five Kage Summit never has time to happen. Before anyone can start even focusing their forces, the Ten Tails is revived. The Five Nations are in disarray, unable to coordinate. Pain planned to use this as a weapon to teach them to never war again, but not Toby, or Obito. He would betray Pain before he could do much of anything, killing him and taking the Rinnegan for himself to cast the infinite Tsukiyomi. But alas, this fails as well, because Black Zetsu still exists and turns him into the vessel of Kaguya Otsutsuki. 
Kaguya would reclaim her chakra from the world and would turn all humans into Zetsu. It's then that Taneri Otsutsuki would attempt to destroy the Earth by pelting it with the moon. Whether he actually does this or not is unknown. His grandmother may show up there just to spank him, and we know she would. Or maybe he just pelts the Earth and nothing happens because Zetsu just grow back. Anyway, she waits for Momoshiki and Kinshiki, both of whom show up, but you can't tell me that both of them are stronger than Kaguya, who has absorbed all of the chakra possible on Earth. If so, then Naruto by the Boruto era is stronger than all the shinobi on Earth put together? Maybe in some Tsukiyomi dream. Ishiki would likely never cause her an issue, it would take a pretty high up Otsutsuki to defeat her. And scene. That's the end of my what if, but it's only one interpretation. What are your interpretations? What if Naruto got the full portion of Demon Fox? Would he lose control, or would he just get stronger? I could have written that instead, but I doubt that it would have been anywhere near as interesting. Anyways, leave a comment and tell us what you think. Give a like if you're so inclined, it would be our honor to receive it. Try tossing a coin to your local Witcher by subscribing to our channel and supporting us. Helps us make more content for you, and uh, ring that bell so you get informed when we do make that content. Until then, peace.